Follow these three things to combat the holidays. Pack a lunchbox when you go to your Christmas <laughs> dinner. Bring all your own food. Yeah. And when you get there, slap it on the table and just eat your food in yeah. front of everybody else. Refuse to eat anything <laughs> that tastes good for the holidays. This is Generation Health. Every week we bring you the latest news, cutting edge research, and time-tested best practices helping you live a longer, healthier life. Across from me. Farm D, certified strength and conditioning specialist, Dante DiMatteo. How are you, my friend? I'm doing all right. Yeah? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm I'm fantastic. Good. I'm here. It's a good day. Sun is out. Just Sun's sun. out. Gun's out. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, now I've never I'm self-conscious. I've never seen that shirt. You've never seen this shirt? <laughs> it looks a lot like the other shirts that I've worn. We got to slap a logo on there. Oh, no. No, 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 no. We're not going to adulterate my shirts. We're going to draw you a logo. <laughs> we get to come up with your logo each week. Moving, each week, a new logo. Moving on. <laughs> Josiah Schweinberg, engineer extraordinaire. How are you, uh, my friend? Uh, I'm not extraordinaire. What? I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. You're I'm extraordinary. Good. Extraordinaire. Audio engineer extraordinaire. You're, you're an extraordinary person. We got to get you in that the drummer's box like the old days. Oh, you remember that? Dude. That would be dope. I have no idea what we're talking about. The like the the plexiglass cages that <laughs> yeah, drummers yeah. are in. Where yeah. you used to oh used to drum. Oh okay, all right. Not just in general. We just that didn't would be just sick keep if you. We could, sit, we could dummy one back there. Just Photoshop Michael Depish, yeah. our editor, now has a new <laughs> challenge. Just uh, superimpose. Is that even a word anymore? Superimpose. Superimpose. Just put a drum out. shield around me. I'll just. Do, 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 do. I just think we should put you in a cage just to keep you safe. I, you know what? You, you and my wife the, would be. Bring the heat. <laughs> Dante, what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about how to have a potentially healthier holiday. Yes. Pot potentially. But, <laughs> well, that, that, that would be a good goal, mm -hmm. a reasonable goal. And Josiah also has some wisdom for us from Proverbs. Excellent. From the cage. Yeah, from the cage. From the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the drums. Uh, and this is why you have to watch the show instead of just listening, because then you won't get all the special effects. Josiah just and I go back to all the way to the cage days. Cage That's what days. people need to know. Cage, cage match. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but first, let me share what's been going on behind the counter. This is pharmaceutical news. Being a night owl has its advantages. I used to be one. I loved it. You can exercise when your strength is at its daily peak. You stay mentally alert longer after waking, and studies suggest a higher average IQ. But researchers at Harvard studying 60,000 female nurses have found that night owls, or evening chronotypes if you prefer, have a 19% higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes if they have to be up early for work. The increased risk was not seen in night owls that also worked nighttime shifts. Researchers believe that this is primarily due to the bad habits of so many night owls, uh, exercising less, eating unhealthy diets, and having a higher BMI, smoking, and generally sleeping fewer hours. If I could be so bold as to restate the findings of the study, there's nothing magical or different about the chronotypes, uh, about the physiology of night owls, but staying up late makes you more likely to do all of the things we all know will lead to type 2 diabetes. So more research that tells us everything we already knew. Swedish drug manufacturer Orexo has, at FDA request, filed a new application for approval of their opioid rescue medication. What makes OX-124, that would be the name of their drug, uh, unique from other rescue medications like naloxone is its method of delivery. Orexo has created a method of delivering powdered medications through the nose that they say results in more rapid absorption and higher bioavailability when compared with naloxone. What's more, Orexo hopes to use this method to deliver a higher dose version of the anti-overdose medication to help in even more harrowing situations. Opioids account for over 75% of all overdose deaths, and the total number of deaths has been climbing rapidly. In 2017, roughly 47,600 people died from opioid-related overdoses, that number is expected to be well over 100,000 in 2023. If OX124 can help bring those numbers down, uh, we are wishing them the best of luck. That would be a good thing. Dante, 
naloxone. Is that something you guys carry in store? Is that something that you can just buy over the counter or do you have to order that specially? So I don't know when the exact year was, but there's a standing order in Pennsylvania Oh, um, amongst other states that allow pharmacies to dispense it without a prescription because the standing order serves as the prescription. Oh, okay. So I think you can kind of use your, you know, you can use your best judgment when dispensing it and whatever else, but theoretically that's the point is, Got to, it. Pr- is to provide easy access. So with that, we always do have some, Yeah, it just sometimes depends on the form, you know, and over the last five or six years, like this new product, there have been generics to come out and newer versions and just different types of, you know, yeah. um, nasal administration bottles and spray, you know, that sort of thing. I didn't realize that this is as big of a deal as, as ubiquitous as it is. Um, until I was at, um, I was in Chattanooga. Uh, we go whitewater rafting every year with my family and a whole bunch of friends. And there's always a music festival down on the, um, the, the riverfront that same weekend. And so we were walking across a bridge looking at this huge music festival and they had a tent like big public music festival. They had a Mm. tent that said, uh, overdose tent or something like that right there. And this is the middle of the day in a major metropolitan city, like not in a weird place. It wasn't like a heavy metal festival or anything where you would expect. (laughs) I was going to (laughs) say, what what kind of concert? No, it was, it was nickel Creek was playing like fusion bluegrass music. Like that's (laughs) not, not your typical, uh, target market. But that's the thing, you know, anybody can be using, you don't know, and they could ramp up their use at a, there was Nickel there was, Creek. Show. So I officiated a wedding recently. Yeah. And at the um at the reception, at the reception hall. Yeah. They had a flyer like laminated on the front door that says we, you know, we carry or we inside we have provided this drug. Yeah. And I was like, Heather, is this normal for people to like post it? And she's like, Oh yeah. I mean, you know, depending on you know, setting, you know, neighborhood, those types of things. And I was like, it's a, I, it, I just didn't realize it was that readily available. Right. And people had it just in case, you know. Yeah. I mean, if, if 75% of all overdose deaths are caused by that, um, it makes sense to have it available. And uh, I hope that, I hope that this new drug can help save more people's lives. Mm-hmm. Moving right along, Dante. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And then right after that is Christmas because that's how that works every single year. I don't know if you are aware of that. And then between Christmas and New Year's in my house, we call it cheese week because all that you have left is the cheese platter and (laughs) nobody cares. So you just eat cheese all week long. Um, It is traditionally a time of year when my health goals go completely out the window and I just kind of let myself go. I don't want to do that this year. I assume that most of our listeners don't as well. Help me out. Oh, what are some ways that we can stay on task, on goal, making progress, or at least not completely decimating all of the work that we've done throughout the year? This is a, this is a hot one. <laughs> the, we can get down into some details, but the overarching idea I think here is the the holidays are obviously over a finite finite period of time. Right. So it's, you know, there's granted October through December, like you've outlined. Yeah. Is jam packed with social events and, you know, this family this side of the family's Christmas party, this side of the family trick or treats, this side of the family does the Thanksgiving on Saturday. Yeah. And then you have your regular Thanksgiving on Thursday. And you got the leftovers. And you have leftovers. So yes, it is more than just one day plus New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I mean, it's a lot. It yeah. is. It's more, it's more than any other time of year for your standard, you know. And my daughter's birthday is in there too. So mm-hmm. I have to eat cake. Mm-hmm. Anniversaries. Oh, that's right. You got that one coming up. No, not, mm-hmm. me, not just me. Oh, that's right. Big oh my dog. gosh. Number one. That's right. Wow. What are you going to do to stay on track? Well... What I was going to say was that was the long way to say that even though it is several days of 
potential excess eating and social environments and not your normal sleep schedule, et cetera. Right. Just, you have to zoom back, zoom out and still look at your progress and look at your plan and look at all that you're doing on more of a monthly, quarterly, yearly, five year basis, you know, and, mm-hmm. and this, this message is echoed in a lot of the, you know, circles that seemingly kind of know how to encourage people the right way, not just your Instagram, follow these three things to, to come, you know, to combat the holidays and right. you'll be fine. You yeah, know, yeah, pack, yeah. A, pack a lunchbox when you go to your Christmas <laughs> dinner <laughs> at Aunt <Right>. Sally's. <laughs> yes. <laughs> bring, bring all your own food. Yeah. And when you get there, slap it on the table and just eat your food in yeah. front of everybody else. Refuse to eat anything <laughs> that tastes good for the holidays. Yeah. This isn't like three tips that will guarantee you won't eat a single piece of pumpkin pie. This is not a listicle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the key is just zooming out. Will these decisions over the next three weeks, these intermittent decisions, these, you know, more calorie dense meals, are these really going to change the trajectory, change what I'm trying to do with my life over the next year, two years, five years. And yes, it's still very important to do the try to implement little things over the micro time frame so days and weeks yes you still want to we'll talk about some of those things but in general when it's so easy so easy to get discouraged you have no choice but to look back on past christmases past new years mm-hmm. and ask yourself what i ate on those days those nights did that dramatically change where i am right now did right. that affect me going to the gym today, that I, did that affect me going to the grocery store the last month? We fixate on this time period, and rightfully so, because the the food environment changes even more. The social environments heighten even more. The, yeah. the amount of you know temptation that sort of surrounds us is just amplified to the nth degree. Right. So you have to zoom out. Yeah. If I decide to eat X or Y and not pay attention to calories that the next handful of family gatherings, right. Is that going to change the amount that I'm hoping to bench press in a year? Is right. that going to change the amount of cholesterol lowering that I was hoping to achieve over the next year or two? Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, there's going to be short-term fluctuations, but you have to, the, the message there is to zoom out. That is a really solid, uh, perspective to keep in mind throughout this. Mm-hmm. I think, I think you can apply that to just about anything. Yeah. I still, still dealing with a kind of a minor shoulder injury, dealing with a knee injury, just sort of overuse stuff potentially. Yeah. And it's frustrating in the moment to not be able to do the things that you want to do in that moment per se, or maybe at the intensity that you're used to or whatever. But if you zoom out and you say, Hey, you know what? This is this is a phase, just like the holidays are a phase. What is what do the next two years look like? I I'm more worried about am I still gonna like doing this in two years? Yeah. In five years. You know, there's gonna be short term pain. Man, that's a good that's a good way of thinking it's not about the that same, too. It's not the same thing. And this isn't about my shoulder injury, <laughs> but this is just about man, that principle is very much applicable across the board. Or, you know, If I don't, if I decide to do three sets of bench press today of eight reps instead of four sets of six reps, right? What is this going to do for me in the next two years? I mean, there's going to be these little oscillations, right? But at some point, you have to you have to back up. So, in in would I be right in saying that part of what you're saying is what matters more is what you do over time in the long run Mm -hmm. than what happens in the course of the next, you know, three, four, five family holidays. Mm -hmm. And look at it this way. This is a, this is a time to not throw everything out the window per se. That's also not what we're saying. But when you, everyone knows the feeling when you have to travel for a couple days, Mm -hmm. sleeping in someone else's bed, sleeping at a hotel or just anything to knock you off kilter it's going to be that much easier to say, I'm not going to the gym that's down the street. I don't feel like doing this. I never get to see my cousins. I never get to see these people. I'm not going to miss this dinner. 
Well, that's fine. But what you can do is say, hey, I'm going to just make sure I get 7,000 steps in, 8,000 steps in, right. wherever your baseline is, 10,000 steps. Or you know what? I'm not going to be able to do anything for the next five days. It's snowing out here and I'm doing X and Y. I'm going to try to get 12,000 steps in. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can. There are a million ways to focus somewhere else. Focus, just sl- slightly shift the focus and also back up a step as well. Because before you know it, you'll get right back into routine. Mm-hmm. Yep. It'll be it'll be January 10th and you're going to feel like crap for a week and then you'll blank. You're midway through January and you're right back to where you were. Makes sense. Yeah, right? I, I, I'd also warn against maybe because th- there have been times so I've been I've been running frequently part of my routine the past couple of years but there have been times I'm like hey you know I, I did the turkey trot you know for Thanksgiving you know next week or whatever you know I'm, I'm going to do the turkey trot or I'm going to do whatever yeah uh, and so I can just have a couple maybe I will have a couple slices of pumpkin pie mm-hmm. which so I so the warning would be don't work out and then feel like you just gorge yourself on all kinds of stuff either sure but like so I don't know. Yeah, I agree that that uh, I didn't know if there was any any validity to that. Like, so I always I always enjoy like the Thanksgiving Day run. Um, not anything like organized if I do the turkey trot, but like even if I get together with a buddy, I'm like, oh, I know I put a few miles in. You know, three and a, you know I did a I did a five k, um, and so like braggart. Well, I'm not. Well, then I won. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to say five th- k. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so so then I don't necessarily feel like, but I'll like, hey, I'll have some food, but I'm not going to go crazy. Also, but I don't feel like I didn't come off my routines. I'm still doing my routines. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit different for the people who go out of town and who travel and who are with family and those types of things. But um, I I think that that counts for something. I I really like that the, the families that do the flag football game and mm-hmm. the turkey trot, and not that it's you know like. Kind of like Tyler saying, it's like, whoa, well, good for good for you, you know? Like, <laughs> wow, they're, they're, you know? po- they're posting pictures yeah, on yeah. Thanksgiving while I'm eating my yeah. Piece of pie. yeah. They had they I didn't even wake up till noon, and they already <laughs> played four football games and ran 16 miles, you know. Um, but with that said, that's that's a that's a nice little goal. That's a fun way to incorporate physical activity. I'm sure that you know that run, just the fact that it's a holiday, it's a it's just a overall a very positive time as mm-hmm. it is to lump in physical activity and lump in activity in a creative way in a fun way. I mean, that's, that's awesome. You know what I mean? I would, I love to look forward to something like that. That's a nice cheap way, in my opinion, to have a goal. Yeah. You know, it doesn't mean you still can't go to the local restaurant on Wednesday night. You know what I mean? You could still yeah. do those things and you just, you, maybe you don't perform your best on Thursday for the Turkey trot but you just still get out and do it. Yeah. And there's more to it than just like, I ran this many miles. It was this many steps. I burned 622 calories. Yeah, right. Now I can eat three pieces of pie. Right. It's just, it's more about the bigger picture. It's that one workout, no matter how well you did or how fast you ran or how many touchdowns you had, is not going to move the needle that much anyway. It's still just one, it's still one workout, right? Right. So six, you know? t- six touchdowns. It means six touchdowns. <laughs> no, no big deal. 12 targets, like 10 catches, six touchdowns. Look, you were playing against your grandmother. It doesn't count. <laughs> no, it's just my 11-year-old. Yeah, right. Yeah. At, the end of the day, at the end of the day, nobody cares how many touchdowns he had against like Aunt, <laughs> Aunt Sally. Aunt, Aunt Sally. Sally. Yeah. Going to Aunt Sally. Yeah. yeah. I liked that notion of playing a game with a family or something like that. I hadn't even, I don't know why it even occurred to me. I love going for walks with my mm-hmm. wife on Thanksgiving. There's no reason I can't say, hey, kids, come on. We're going to go out, for, we're going to, we're going to go for a walk. Yeah. You know, and just, we're going to walk for a couple of miles before dessert. That's just the way it's going to be. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> and in, in Pittsburgh, I mean, it's, sometimes it's raining. Yeah, it's true. It's nasty. Sometimes it's, you, you never know what you're going to get, but I kind of like doing the same thing. It's, it's the, you know, you're not going to lift, you know, you're not going to be able to run. You're helping make the Turkey. You're doing this stuff. Well, when the you know, six-year-olds, eight-year-olds, nieces and nephews want to run around and shoot Nerf guns yeah. and tackle you and do those kind of things. That that counts for something. Yeah. You know what I mean? That that all, that doesn't count for, you know, sets and reps, but it, it counts for something on, Especially on all levels. Especially when you wake up the next day and you're sore mm-hmm. because somebody needs you in a weird place. You can mm-hmm. pretend it's muscle pain from exercising. Yeah. And, and 
that's also not to say, I don't know where you were going to go with this, but that's also not to say that you can't, if you still are a little more performance oriented, more, you know, analytical about tracking and more analytical about still getting in your right amount of training volume on a week in a, in a week's time or whatever, there are still things that you can do to, you know, and you can, you'll find these tips anywhere, but Thanksgiving dinner's coming up. Maybe you skip, you usually have oatmeal for breakfast and four pieces of fruit. You can skip that and yeah. you just save that for the apple pie later. Right. You know what I mean? Or vice versa. You know, yeah. you have a big brunch with family, just do it up on the front end and mix in a protein shake later on in the day or the nighttime. Or if you don't, that's fine too. Yeah. But there, there are certainly trade-offs on that micro level if you feel so inclined, if you are motivated to control as much as you can control, that doesn't mean you can't start making trade-offs, especially because over the short term, it's it's not it's not that you want to push somebody to fall into maybe a little bit of a neurotic, yeah, disordered, disordered eating, eating pattern. Yeah, no. But there's there's in my estimation, there's nothing wrong with a slightly compensatory approach during the holidays. No, it make it makes a lot of sense. I think right? that planning ahead is one of the things that we mm -hmm. always talk about in blog posts and stuff that we've covered in this, in the past mm -hmm. planning ahead, knowing, knowing that Thanksgiving dinner is coming up. So I'm going to take it real easy on the night before. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to have a, a salad, a simple salad with some light dressing, a balsamic dressing, and that's going to be dinner. Mm -hmm. You know, um, having that kind of planning ahead is a, a great option and planning your activity ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? Any other thoughts? Day of? Day of. Oh man. It's really, I can't imagine just not going for it on those days. Portion control has helped me. <laughs> I have found that if I can allow myself a small amount, mm -hmm. I don't then have to have the entire pie. I can, I can, I can have a slice. That's mm -hmm. good. But if, but I can stop there mm -hmm. slowing down. Um, yeah. Do, but do, if you want to go for it, you, you do that. You have depending, that Yeah. And de depending <laughs> on, I don't know, everybody, everybody is obviously going to process this stuff a lot differently. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, they might say that is absolutely ridiculous. I'm not even thinking about my health or my fitness during this time period. It doesn't even phase me. I'm just going to enjoy it. Gonna, just going to enjoy this time of year is what it is. I'm going to get it, get in what I can as far as exercise and salads and fruit and stuff and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. That's a fine mindset. Who are we to say there's anything wrong with that? But there's also this mindset that for those couple months, you know, end of October through the new year, there again is just going to be no question, more exposures to more sweets and more crazy dinners and more family dinners that partaking in those will potentially just make you that much more motivated to kick it right back into gear when, when all of that stuff inevitably yeah. dies off. You know, like I, like Josiah said, he went for the turkey trot, had a couple pieces of pie. I don't know that, you know, again, it very much depends on the person, Yep. but I don't know that for the next like two hours, eight hours, 48 hours that like, you still want that much pie Where, right. whenever you reach, yeah. whenever you reach that certain point, you're often like, you know what? I'm like ready for the salad. Yeah. I am mm -hmm. ready to just, um, you know what? We need to get outside. Let's go. Yeah. We need to go for a long walk. We need to, you pay attention to those cues. You know what I mean? That doesn't, doesn't mean you let you, those cues take you away from your family and you know, start sneak this and the relatives for eating, you know, <laughs> yeah, this and no. that. but you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you need to let it, let it take you. You know what I mean? You'll, you'll know right when you're off your compass and then be unapologetic. I'm going to take a walk. Let's go catch football. Let's go do this. Or where's the closest gym? I'm just going to go do something for 30 minutes Yeah. or pick up some like, you know, water jugs in the garage, do some curls, <laughs> something. Take, take uh, all the know? garbage out to the garbage can. From, yeah. From Does that qualify? Yeah. That qualifies as exercise, taking the trash out? Yeah, like farmers carry Mul multiple <laughs> multiple trips. If you do laps around the house if you with lunge them. them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you throw, if you throw them, you I know? think one of the things you said that is key too is the 
acknowledgement that it's just going to be what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, like giving yourself permission to have a day off. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we can get very caught up in tracking and all those details because it is good and it's a helpful, to, helpful tool. But setting your expectations ahead of time of just kind of going, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's all right. Today is going to be the day that we just take it off and we're just going to not worry about it. Yeah. Yes. That helps me a lot. Absolutely. And if you, and if you are, I, I know this feeling, if you're somebody who in the last six months, you've really ramped it into gear, you started tracking, you've learned a little bit more about what's in your food, started, you know, doing some different things. You're, you're eight weeks into a workout program and you're a little intimidated by what's to come because you know how that goes. Every year it's the same thing. Your boys are in town, your family's in town, things get a little crazy and you're just a little anxious, uh, anxious about falling off the, you know, falling off the rocker, especially if you've fallen off the rocker in the past, Mm -hmm. you just have to potentially be okay with, like Tyler said, planning ahead, knowing that maybe the next two months isn't going to be the two months where I add 10 more pounds to my bench press. I'm probably not going to increase my mile time over the next two months. So knowing that punch the clock, get to the gym, walk, you know, control what you can control in the kitchen. Just, but again, it's more of that punch the clock mentality versus it's maybe not the, it's maybe not the best optimization time. Right. You know what I mean? This is more this about showing like, up it's than it is about up. setting mm-hmm. a new record. Right. Now, if you're competing for something in the winter, then, you know, maybe there are some, there are some trade-offs. Or if you're saying this, you know, if you travel 16 times a year and you're saying this every, every, every time you travel, and you're yeah. like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to just have to be punching the clock and you know, you're falling off the rocker every four weeks. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. But in this very, um, notable time period, be okay with zooming out and just knowing that maybe the next two to three months isn't the period of optimization. If you're somebody who is very concerned about falling off the wagon. I love it. I love it. I think it's, I think it's good stuff. Yeah. And it also doesn't lose sight of the fact that there are things that matter more than your total caloric intake right. or the number of reps you did. And spending time with friends and family is absolutely part of that. Absolutely. Yeah. There's all types of, uh, there's, there's a million and one studies that talk about the sheer, the, the healthiest people are those, are those with the deepest relationships, Yep. you know, by whatever metric that is, this is, this is a time period to optimize your family and personal relationships. I like that. That's really good. This is a, this is a perfect time to optimize family relationships. Mm. Good stuff. Josiah, you got something for us wisdom wise? Yeah. What do you got? Share, share a little bit more from the Proverbs. Like I did a few episodes ago. I love Proverbs. Yeah, Proverbs is great. A lot of wisdom there. Uh, But before I get into this, just also want to kind of say as a preface, I came across this quote from um, the late Dr. Tim Keller And um, he has a lot to say about the Proverbs and just wisdom in general. And he just says, so as you're reading scripture, as you're studying, listening to this podcast, you're getting wisdom insight regard to your health, your spiritual formation or your journey. He says, wisdom doesn't avoid suffering. It transforms suffering into more wisdom. So wisdom is having the hindsight to see, hey, I, even though I was, working out and I was disciplined. I had these routines. I'm reading my Bible, reading scripture. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to avoid tough times. It doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to avoid, but wisdom is having the hindsight to see, okay, I won't fall into those same traps and all of those same, you know, maybe problems or issues again. So it transforms suffering into more wisdom. So uh, with that, Proverbs 4, 25 verse 27 says, let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Ponder the path of your feet then all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the, or to the left, but turn your foot away from evil. So there's no doubt that it's difficult to stay focused in today's, today's world and today's culture. I did a quick Google search on the top 10 distractions. I'll guess what the number one is. Phones. Cell phones. Yep. <laughs> Yay! Mobile devices and social media. Any other guesses at the top 10? Sports. Uh, the sports is not on here. Well, then that's a wrong Te- list. television <laughs> and streaming services. Oh, okay. is number two. All right. Procrastination, multitasking, 
Uh, one that always gets me as far as uh, distraction is personal worries and anxieties. Mm. So uh, my wife and I, we call this living in the land of hypotheticals. <laughs> You spend so many times, you know, so much time hypothesizing about what could happen. You mm-hmm. get so distracted and it takes away from what's very important um, to you. Uh, but kind of the main idea or the main thought is that keeping our focus on God, on his scripture, give us pro- gives us proper perspective, keeps us grounded, helps us make wise decisions so that we can be a people of peace, resilience, and purpose. And I've got a couple studies for you. Ooh, so there was, there was research conducted at Columbia University, uh, and it demonstrated that prayer and spiritual practices were linked to an increased emotional well-being and decreased levels of anxiety and depression. There's another, another study published by the Journal of Health and Psychology found that prayer was associated with greater resilience and a better ability to cope with stressor, stressors. And so we identified top 10 distractions, social media, television, streaming services, different things like that. So I think if we're being honest, we can say, hey, the time that I spent scrolling social media, did it help me? Uh, Did it help me practically? Did it help me spiritually? Um, And Jesus in the New Testament, in the gospel, Luke chapter nine, he says, uh, Jesus was speaking to a group of people. Jesus said to them, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. And so when when farmers would drive their oxen and plow the ground, what they would do is they would focus on a rock or a tree somewhere in the distance. So they always would keep their, their plow straight. And um, it's it can be difficult, you know, eliminating distractions, uh, but it's so important, especially, you know, planting livestock where we want to be disciplined. We want to keep focus on our on our on our workout routine, on our eating habits, on our schedules, all of these things. And if we're constantly distracted, um, listen to what Jesus says in a verse in a verse before this. So this same group of people, he says, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Uh, this this guy and says, yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first yeah. let me say farewell to those in my home. Um, and it's so interesting how that. I mean. We could do a whole section on the butts of the Bible. <laughs> Bible butts? <laughs> the big butts, small butts. You know, I, I want to do this, but... And I mean, I, I mean, we say that all the time. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, yeah, I, w- I want to follow you, Lord. I want to read my scripture more, but I want to get disciplined with my health routine, but I want to I stay focused. I want to do these things, but there's things that are always pulling for my, uh, pulling for my attention. And so the prime example, if we just continue on that same passage of Luke 9, the prime example uh, is Jesus. And in verse 51 of Luke 9, it says, When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face towards Jerusalem. I just thought the greatest example, Jesus, in the days, the last days and weeks of his life, before he would go to the cross and die, he was still focused on his mission. And so we look to Jesus, his resilience. He often spent times away in solitude, yeah. in prayer, you know, to have that greater resilience. He always had the mission that God gave him as his focus. And so we don't live perfect lives. You know, we, we can try to stay focused. We can try to do the best. We can try to stay disciplined. We can try to read our Bible. We can try to read scripture. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we won't encounter difficulties but we continue to look at the example of Jesus and how he kept his focus on all of us really and the world. And, uh, and we let, we let suffering transform into more wisdom. So, so everybody out there, keep your hand at the plow. That's it. Stay focused, be resilient, be different. What, what do we say in a few episodes? We need that grit. That's great. Yeah. Keep grinding. Thank you, Josiah. You're welcome. Yeah, it was great. Folks, we hope you are going to have a wonderful Thanksgiving and uh, we'll talk to you again before Christmas, but we hope you have that as well. Uh, I should give the standard outro here so that everybody knows these things. If you're looking for any of the products that we didn't mention any of, but we have products that are available on our website, askjoedematteo.com, A-S-K-J-O-E-D-I-M-A-T-T-E-O.com. You can also sign up for our newsletter, find out about the original show, Ask Joe DiMatteo. That's all on there. Find past episodes on there. Go check that out. That's also where you can email us questions, questions at askjodamadio.com. Show notes are going to be available down below. 
And if you enjoyed this episode, if you learned something, drop a comment down below, leave a thumbs up or a five-star rating. Most of all, share it with somebody you know and love, somebody else that can use this information. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, guys. Share the show helps us grow. Sharing the show helps us grow. That's right. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Josiah. Thank you, Michael Deppish, our editor, Joyce Gibb, our nurse practitioner, Diane Silverman, who handles our dis- product. She handles our products. Uh, Terry does scheduling. Cecilia does distribution. That's Dante DiMatteo. I'm Tyler Andrews. We'll see you next week. <laughs>